Torkoal and Slowpoke is a duel we've seen in Generation 7 on the ladder, and this one with an Iron Ball for Rigorath ended up finishing 118th in the last Stadium Ladder season. We're going to be trying out and see how well it performs. This team features the classic combo of the weakness policy Torkoal with the Slowpoke. And the reason is you have that weakness policy on Torkoal and other water types are generally too fast for it. But this Slowpoke ends up being the perfect speed tier, still has decent bulk overall and has the ability to go for the Surf to power up the Torkoal. Really low special attack stats so you're not doing too much damage. Activate that policy and then the Torkoal gets to blow things up. And you have like a lot of cool options with this team, especially with the eject button Iron Hands. You can go for the fake out into the opponent, get the trick room up. And hopefully if they activate your eject button, free switch to Torkoal. And then you can start blowing up teams after activating that weakness policy and dish you out quite a bit. To pair up, we have that slow poke with that heal pulse option and the skill swap to help play around the rain and tornadoes for prankster, as well as flash fire mons and other things that can play around the Torkoal's fire type moves. We also have the Ferrigarath with also skill swap and armor tail, of course, that can really help out with this team, helping make sure that Torkoal doesn't become a victim of very strong priority moves. You have uproar as well that can help out against Amoongus and any other sleep features, and earthquake to activate that policy as well, hitting Heatran and his suit an Arcanine, which four times resists the fire moves, also for some pretty decent chip damage. And to round out the team, you also have this Follow Me Helping Hand Ogre Pond for supports with Torkoal if you feel like you need the extra support, as well as a Choice Specs Flurry Me that could clean up in the end games or just go for some really strong damage in the beginning to weaken things for the Torkoal in the end. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Tatsugiri Dundozo, the Lens Fairy and Fluttermane. The Glamora and Rillaboom. Okay, so... Hmm. It's going to be a little bit tough. The Glamora actually is kind of annoying, but I should be able to handle this just fine. I do want to go with... I think I want to start off with the Iron Hands plus the Ferrigraph. Seems pretty solid to me. Have the Torkoal in the back and then slow poke as the final, I'm pretty sure. A lot of this is just trying to set up Trick Room if I can immediately, which I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to against this team. Hopefully the idea is Iron Hands gets eject button now turn one as I go for a fake out, set up Trick Room, get a free switch to Torkoal and start going for the Earthquake, side Earthquake plus the Eruption. So we're going to see the Landers Glamour, which I'm not too surprised about as I will lead the Iron Hands plus the Ferrigraph. I don't know if you turn into Sludge Bomb can KO for Riga, but obviously we don't want to risk it, so I will just go for a fake out immediately. Air Balloon on the Glamora. Huh. <laughs> that actually makes it really weird because I want to hit it with Earthquake so I can ensure the eruption hitting, but okay. Can I skill swap the poison body away? That could actually be a play. But I will go for a trick room, turn one and a fake out into the Landorus, making sure that I Get that Torkoal in safely with the Trick Room up. Mortal Spin does come out, which I'm not too surprised, so that's perfect. Poison will happen on both, but I do have the Eject button here on my Iron Hand, so I do get the free switch in to my Torkoal, and going to be able to do a lot coming up, so... Okay. Hmm. We will go out into our Torkoal right here, as it is very safe, and then now it's time to begin... The eruption spam right here. Man, it's... I think I KO the Glamora. With a plus two eruption. Actually, no. Glamora has really good bulk. I think it really just depends on the spread of the Glamora. But on the bright side, I got Torkoal in without getting poison, which is really nice. So let's just go for the powerful eruption here. We are going to go for a, a earthquake here into my Torkoal. And let's see what we can accomplish here. This might be Spiky Shield from the Glamora, but this also could just be an attack. Uh, the Landorus is kind of in a weird spot because it's always pinned. So pretty much probably going down here, which is pretty good. The only problem is I got to watch out for Tatsugiri. I actually need my Iron Hands decently healthy to take on the Tatsugiri in the end game Because even with a plus two special attack, Sun Boosted Fire move with Terra Fire, I don't think the Torkoal is going to accomplish much. Which is nice is we don't actually activate the Toxic Spike. So... Slowpoke will actually have some survivability, which is going to be pretty big. And because of their Intimidate, they actually lower the amount of damage that my Ferrigraph does to my Torkoal. So I'm actually going to be able to get a more powerful Eruption off, which is pretty solid here. 
So here comes an eruption. This is going to do a ton of damage to my opponent right here. Let's see if it takes on Glamora or not. Not close enough, but still some pretty good damage. We do get rid of the Glamora air balloon, and let's see what they decide to go for. It's going to be uh, Mortal Spin, which is kind of fine here. Let's get the Torkoal Poison. Not the worst. I guess the question is, what is the Dundozo doing? <laughs> I think that's a big question here. The Ferrigraph is going to be taking a bit of chip. Uh, my Torkoal is kind of dangerously low right here. We're going to find out if it's Tatsugiri coming out or Dundozo. This is going to be Dundozo, looks like, which is fine here. I'm going to hard switch in a slow poke and just click Heat Wave here. Ah, no, actually, no. Eruption still... Russia should do about the same amount of damage, but also like it can't miss. So we're going to go out in our slow poke because we get the option to actually go for a heal pulse and a Torkoal. So we actually have more damage output with it. And also like keeping for Rigraf healthy, I think is still pretty nice. So slow poke going to come out. We're going to see Dundozo protect. Is it double spiky shield as well? Or is it just uh okay? Yeah, double spiky shield, which is perfectly fine. Okay, nice. All right. And now we can go for another eruption plus a heal pulse and uh we're gonna find out what this dundozo is i i'd imagine i mean they used to run unaware pretty much every time but they switched to oblivious i don't know which one this is going to be we'll find out together i suppose uh i guess i could also skill swap too if i really need to but i i rather first go for the heal pulse right now to make sure that the torkoal survives the turn and then it depends on like how much the dundozo does i'm assuming it's earthquake coming out and tatsugiri switch which we do see the Glamour retreating into the Tatsugiri. Yep. We'll see how much, I guess, based on the damage into the Dundozo. Like, if this isn't unaware Dundozo, we're doing a ton of damage. But next turn, we can easily just, like, skill swap the Dundozo if we really need to. I think we should be able to live a plus two Earthquake. Not super comfortably, but I'm hoping we can live two ticks of poison plus that. Because it's going to be a big deal here. So we get a heal pulse off into the Torkoal make sure that we're surviving turns here comes the eruption how much damage is this doing to the dundoza right here that's gonna be a big question how much are we doing here that is definitely unaware dundoza okay as they go for order up actually okay that actually makes it easier because i'll be able to tank the attacks easier okay perfect leftovers all right Although I think Earthquake can actually threaten to knock down the Torkoal, especially with one tick of poison, so I gotta be aware of that. This is still one more turn of Trick Room. I think do I wanna skill swap here or do I wanna just flamethrower? I feel like I'd rather just skill swap here and flamethrower the Dundozo. Yeah, let's try it. I don't know if they protect. Yeah, they don't protect because I can just keep heal pulsing the Torkoal. It's not a feeling. And now I'm going to be able to get rid of their unaware on their Dundoza, which is actually pretty big because this flame door is going to do a ton more damage because we have that sun boost, that terror fire, the plus two. This should do some 50%. Wow, that did a lot less than I was hoping for. Okay. Uh, order up into the slow poke. But because the slow poke has the unaware. Oh, boy. Ooh. Ooh, there are some plays I can make the next turn if I really, really want to. So I'm going to Trick Room here and Protect. Yeah, always Trick Room Protect here. If they have Sub, they have Sub. I can't really do much about it. But yeah, we go for Protect here with our Torkoal. We go for the Trick Room. But Unaware... Uh... Actually, unaware is going to be crazy with the slow poke against the Dundozo. <laughs> it is really going to go crazy. They go for liquidation to the Torkoal, which is beautiful. Okay. And I'm going to be able to get the uh, Trick Room set up, which is great. Okay, perfect. I'm trying to think of whether it's worth it to skill swap the unaware into the Torkoal or just go for a flamethrower and just get immediate damage. Hmm... I think I want to go for a flamethrower here in the torque into the Dundozo. And actually, skill swap. No, I do skill swap the Torkoal here, actually. Yeah, I do skill swap the Torkoal because I get the drought with the Slowpoke. But the, more importantly, Torkoal gets the unaware. So the Torkoal actually doesn't care about the spe special defense boost. But this flamethrower is going to do a lot more to the Dundozo than it did previously. So I always get the drought. Plus the flamethrower that has the unaware from the Dundozo. So I get a huge powerful attack. I've almost KO'd the Dundozo, but that damage is good enough. Here comes a liquidation. <laughs> and because we have the sun boost, the unaware, the Torkoal is going to survive this 
plus the poison tick and guess what if they try to protect on the poison i heal pulse the torkoal back oh my goodness here comes a flator into the dozo here comes a heal pulse into the torkoal it is yep they protect you does not matter this slow poke torkoal combination do not care here comes a heal pulse into the torkoal absolutely stunning right here and guess what we're gonna get our torkoal back to full we're getting our torkoal back to full oh my goodness this is actually incredible <laughs> Oh, thank you for being unaware so I could show you the skill swap plays. <laughs> I did not think I would live to liquidation in that range, but I guess because I had unaware plus the sun boost, it's actually, or the sun reduction, it's just absolutely insane because Torkoal has naturally high physical defense. But yeah, we just keep going for the heal pulse. We flanked her. Battle going to be forfeit. They realize I cannot do anything. This Torkoal is going to destroy me. And the slow poke combination went insane in that battle actually so impressive <laughs> Roy moon hisuian arcanine annihilate grimmsnarl amoongus and Cresselia. okay grimmsnarl screens is not fun because it limits the damage i put on my torkoal huh <laughs> that's not gonna be super fun to deal with i think i will have to go with iron hands though plus the frigraph anyway Porco in the back and the slow poke, I want to say. I'm a little bit weak to Amoongus if I don't position it right. And even if I do, like Terra Water is still like decently annoying for this team, but not much I can really do. We're just going to be trying it out. I'm a bit worried about their combination of actually, it's funny because they have a lot of things I do not like on this team, which is screens. They have the party shot access. They have the Amoongus, they have Cresselia with Lunar Blessing, and they can reverse Trick Room. There's a lot of things that my team does not like dealing with on here. I have to try to figure a way to brute force it, but will require quite a bit. We're going to see the Aurora Moon and Amoongus, okay. Versus the Ferrigraph and Iron Hands, all right. Going to be that booster energy on the Aurora Moon. Going to be the speed booster, okay. I think we might live it. I think I have to gamble. I think I have to go for a fake out into Amoongus, and I think I have to get a trick room up here. We will see how it goes, but yeah, it's not exactly super easy. I'm just going to have to hope that I can take a knockoff, which I think I can. I don't want to take a spore. I do not have a safety measure. Unfortunately, because I'm faking out the Amoongus, they pretty much will probably assume that, oh, they actually switch out, which is interesting. They didn't have anything to block priority. Annihilate coming out is actually perfect. So I do get to fake out into Amoongus. And okay, now this is a lot easier of a position as we do get to the fake out into Amoongus. going to be that Rocky Helmet, which is fine. And we are going to see the Amoongus flinch. Okay. I'm okay with activating a Rage Powder per se here. I'm just going to go for an Earthquake and swap out in my Torkoal. No Grim here is actually really, really nice. So we'll go for the Earthquake here and just go in a Torkoal. And if they go for a Spore, if they Spore to Furigraph, then I just uh, Eruption with my Torkoal the next turn. So it's like, that's not really a problem. If they go for it into Torkoal, I'm clicking Uproar and then just click the Eruption afterwards. So I'm, I'm fine with the situation. We'll bring out the Torkoal here. It's going to be a pretty strong pick right here. Have that Sun. It can't do immediate damage. I will power up the Rage Fist on the Annihilate, but for that policy on the Torkoal, I will gladly take that. As I think we should be able to eliminate the Annihilate. I mean, Annihilate's bulky, but I don't think it'll be able to live the plus two Eruption in Sun, especially if I tear Fire, which I will. Okay. Can someone tell me why it's Mirror Herb? They bulked up, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. They're not leftovers either, which is actually really surprising to me. All right. Gonna go for that straight Terrifier action immediately. And do I want to... Actually, do I want to go for a... Let me see here. I'm thinking of going to Slowpoke so I can go for a Heal Pulse afterward. But I think I could also... I think if I Uproar here, I do get rid of my Sleep, if I'm not mistaken. I actually haven't used Uproar in like a while, so... 
Let's find out if that's the case. Because if we do, like, I don't see a reason not to click it. Because the slow poke doesn't really benefit me anyway right here. So, we'll bring out the Torkoal. Because, like, if the upper mechanic doesn't work like this, then at least I burn a turn of sleep. And they probably tear water the Amoongus here, I'm assuming. Like, I always imagine this is tear water Amoongus here. No, they tear the Annihilate, which is fine. All right. Into water. Okay. How much damage am I doing here? We'll find out. Oh, why did it have to be a mirror herb out of anything? We're going to see the protect from Moongus. This is Terra Fire Eruption from Torkoal in the Sun. Okay, yeah, so it didn't work as I thought. But, like, if they Terra Water to Moongus, it would have been an interesting one. There goes the eruption. Terra Fire plus two in Sun. I have no idea how much damage this does. We'll find out together. Doesn't KO the Annihilate, okay? You go for a Drain Punch, but it doesn't KO Torkoal because Torkoal is super bulky. But I think Annihilate goes down to Heat Wave, so I'm completely fine with this spot, yeah. So I'm going to go for Heat Wave, and I'm going to just swap out into my Slowpoke so I can start getting some Heal Pulse action into my Torkoal so I can be able to survive the upcoming attacks. So let's see. Bring out the Slowpoke. Attack on Annihilate, yep. Makes sense. And Heat Wave into Amoongus. Hopefully it connects because I'm in a lot of trouble if it doesn't. Okay, nice. Beautiful. Alright, Amoongus goes down. And I think I should be able to click Eruption afterward. After this Heal Pulse is coming up. We have one more turn of Trick Room. Roaring Moon coming in, I'm assuming. Or maybe it's like whatever the last Pokemon is. They can protect switching to Roaring Moon. Because the Annihilate... Even though it'll lose its bulk up and its mirror boost, it'll still have like the Rage Fist boost because it's got like plus three because of the attacks. Arcanine gonna come in. Okay. Oh, that's actually a problem Pokemon too. All right. I need to get damage on that Arcanine and we're going out into our Frigoraph for the Armor Tail because I cannot risk a Choice Bandit E-Speed happening into my Torkoal. Actually, wait, did we use a team similar to this? Is this the Assault Vest on the Assume Arcanine? It might not have KO the Torkoal, but yeah, they do Extreme Speed Attempt, which is perfect. I do have that Armor Tail. And Heat Wave, please just connect on the Annihilate, but it looks like we connect on both, which is fantastic. We are able to land it. Beautiful. And goodbye, Annihilate. Okay. So, despite all this, the game is nowhere near over. Because Roy Moon Arcanine can reverse sweep me because I've taken so much damage right now. We'll see how this remaining one goes. We're going to see the Roy Moon come out. This is probably Rock Slide plus Knockoff. So, I'm going to go for a... They already use our Terra, which is really good at least. I'm going to go for Heat Wave and I'm going to swap out into... I saw my Jax button on Iron Hands, which is crazy when I think about it. I'm going out into my Iron Hands, though. We're going out on Iron Hands. There's no way you're going to go for Extreme Speed. There's no really reason point to protect Torkoal because Torkoal's just going down to any single combination of moves at this point. Knock off to get rid of my Jax button, which is actually perfect for me because it doesn't activate. Uh, so I don't take any, like, unnecessary damage. We're going to see the Rock Slide come out. I don't know if that's Choice Arcanine. If it is Choice, it did just lock itself into the move. But a Speed Booster knockoff. I don't know if there's Acrobatics or Protect. Let's test the Slowpoke Fury out. Sun Fades, which is really good. Because Protosynthesis is no longer active. But more importantly, the Flare Blitz from Arcanine wouldn't hurt nearly as much. We're going out in our Slowpoke... I think Slowpoke would live an attack here. I really think it would. I'm going to go for a Trick Room here and a Fake Out into the Arcanine. So let's see what they decide to do. Knockoff going to come out into Slowpoke. Slowpoke survives. Yep, I had a feeling. And I'm going to be able to get a Trick Room off with a Slowpoke. And now... Trick Room's back up with Iron Hands. Should be able to go for an easy skill... Uh, a heal pulse right here. So I am going to go for the heal pulse. And I'm actually going to go for a close combat with the... Into the Arcanine, I think. Because I, I'm more worried about extreme speed endgame and flare blitz pressure than like the what the Roaring Moon currently offers offensively. I think the only way this is bad is if they extreme speed into the Iron Hands and double it up. And it actually does pick up the knockout into my Iron Hands after the close combat. But 
uh or the close combat drops but yeah we are able to get the close combat knock out arcanine i think they were expecting maybe the furrier have to come in once again to block the extreme speed but we are able to eliminate the arcanine which is fantastic and now the Roaring moon probably gonna take the oh they have acrobatics okay yeah so yeah as i mentioned if they extreme speeded iron hands then it would have been really bad but uh actually no it wouldn't because if they extreme speed i got the heal pulse and then acrobatics came in after yeah no i would have been fine regardless i would have been actually no because i didn't get the if they extreme speed the slow poke it would it would it could have been no because they need the extra damage from extreme speed no we're just fine i'm just uh i'm just tripping right here we get a close combat off into roaring moon pick up that knockout and heal pulse if they want to play defensive and protect and a beautiful wasn't able to fully sweep with Torkoal. Uh, the... Thankfully, they didn't bring Grimmsnarl. They brought Grimmsnarl. It would have been a lot tougher. Like, his even Arcanine made sense. Roy Moon did pressure my Trick Room setters. He... What's it called? There's no Grimmsnarl on the light screen. was great. And Amoongus was annoying as well as the Annihilate. But thankfully, they didn't go for Raytris. They went for Raytris. It would have been putting on a lot of pressure. But a Drain Punch plus three... Not surprising it would have done a lot but it was not pick up the torkoal which was the important part interesting team landis farian the hisuian guja iron valiant moltres Reelaboom, and the wellspring ogre pawn okay don't think this is too bad i should just be able to go with iron hands i'm assuming with ferrograph just commonly just torkoal slowpoke like i could mess around and have some fun with like the with the flutter main like against so, like a pretty slow team that gets directed by flutter main sure but <laughs> i think the main reason is the slow poke tricker mode is just really fun to pilot and it does do well into this team if i do play correctly i mean the only way it doesn't is if there is a good defensive terror on the moltres like terror fire here specifically which could screw me up here because again a lot of the game plan is just trying to sweep through with torkoal can we sweep with Torkoal in this is going to be a big question. We're going to see the uh, Galarian Moltres Reelaboom lead, which is completely fine here. We do lead the Iron Hands and the Rigraph. Now, I am going to go for Fake Out in the Moltres. I can't really... Aff they have Fire Wrath flinching. I think we should live with Hammer unless this Reelaboom has a crazy item. So we should just go for Fake Out and go for the Trick Room. And I think we'll be completely all right. We're going to see the real of actually retreat, which is actually really ideal. So I don't have to worry about like Woodhammer crit or Terra Grass turn one. We're going to see the Landers come in, which is a surprising one. Okay, I'll definitely take that. Hmm. All right. All right. They protect Moltres really passive turn one. I mean, I guess the fake out damage wasn't going to do that much, but I'll gladly take it for sure. Okay. Hmm, all right. I am able to get the Trick Room set up. I imagine they tear with the Moltres here. Hmm, trying to figure out what my best play is here. I think... I want to double out here really badly. I don't think they fire off the Fire Wrath. I really want to just go Torkoal for the Iron Hand slot, which is a bit... Uh, is is it worth the risk if they stop me? I don't think they fire up. I feel like they should nasty plot here. I'm going to go Torkoal. And I'm going to go Slowpoke. And the reason is, if they want to activate a policy, then I think it's fine. Specifically, like if they activate a policy, it actually ends up working out really well for me. But I want to see what their move is here. I don't know if they click U-turn. I don't know if they click stomping or if they click... I don't know why they would click something else, but... We're going on a Torkoal. I feel like Nasty Plot on the Moltres should just be a given here, and they should go for it. Like, I will play Risky here, but I just don't see them doubling up the Iron Hands like the Oh, boy. Well... Oh, wait. Earthquake? Interesting. I guess they don't have Stomping, then? I'll gladly take that. Let me just say I would gladly take that. <laughs> I was not expecting them to actually click Fire Wrath. Is it Tailwind Moltres instead? Is it no Nasty Plot? I felt like Nasty Plot would make sense on this team a lot more, but maybe they just want the immediate damage, but Giraffe Iron Hands was not exactly threatening much. I guess because they... I guess they thought I was going to wall charge the Moltres, but I really was expecting a defensive Terra and just setting up because I thought it was like a pretty free position for them, but we are going to go for the Eruption here. 
and we're gonna go for our heal pulse into our torkoal because we have heal pulse on the torkoal and we have our policy already activated so all i have to do is just click some buttons right here <laughs> and thankfully they did not click stomping specifically wait did they have a they have a real boom too they're the one who stopped grassy terrain why did they have earthquake and why did they click earthquake there okay we're seeing a defensive terror though from the moltres oh the landers are you terra water okay terra water makes sense here okay I mean, I'm KOing the Moltres, and I think Stomping Tantrum after the Heal Pulse is not going to KO. So, yeah, we are going to see the Protect from the Moltres. That makes sense. Get a free Heal Pulse off into the Torkoal. I think we're out of Stomping Tantrum range, if I'm not mistaken. Here comes the Earthquake. They really just not have Stomping? Or did they just want damage on the... Paragraph in case I was terrifying and went for it? That does so much damage to the Landris. Oh, they just have Earthquake. Did they really just only have Urk? Or maybe they didn't expect Heal Pulse. Maybe that's also another reason. I'm thinking that they don't have at this point. They crit me too. Yeah. But Slowpoke tanky it. The Tarko's tanky it. I get another Heal Pulse <laughs> rotation with Eruption. And uh, I don't see their switching right now. Yeah, I do not see their switching. I'm going to go for the Heal Pulse and I'm going to go for the Eruption. They want to try to rotate real, but they can't even rotate real of them in. And I don't think the Landis is carrying protect on this team. So I think they need a double protect with the Glaring Moltres. They need to sack the, they could sack Landis. They could sack real of them too, if they want to. Like, I think either one works, but yeah, uh, not looking good for them. And it looks like no double protect attempt was made. So I am going to be able to get a beautiful, beautiful heal pulse off into my Oracle, as well as an eruption here and a double knockout. So it just comes down to the last two Pokemon. So goodbye and i'm pretty sure i got to claim another one potentially on the real boom because it doesn't look like it's a solvest lander so a solvest real boom still on board and if i can kill the real boom like it's a 4v1 scenario potentially and it's not looking good especially since i still have support here with the slowpoke around the ferrigraph that's in the back and iron hands that's still pretty much kicking gonna be the Iron Valiant coming out. Well, that gets Wide Guard, actually. I don't think you're clicking Wide Guard, though. You're clicking Fake Out. Actually, would you? I guess we could have some interesting situations. I'm clicking Eruption, though. <laughs> I'm clicking Eruption. I'm going for Rigoraf. If they click Wide Guard, that means the Real Boom can only attack, which is fine. Because, like, what are you clicking with Real Boom? Sure, you can get damage on the Support Mom, but you still... I. Uh, you're still ignoring the big target at the end of the day, which is the Torkoal. And I actually don't even see how you're breaking the Torkoal unless you have high horsepower and close combat here, which is high horsepower on the real boom. And I guess you got a Aura Spear, but Aura Spear close combat one of those two in the Torkoal. But we'll find out. They do reveal the Wide Guard. Okay. So they do have Wide Guard on the, on the Ferrigraph. We do go for the Eruption here. I'm fine with going for Trick Room, right? And Socket? Yeah, I am. And if I'm not mistaken, Grassy Terrain, this is the last turn of Grassy Terrain. They went for a knockoff, okay, in the Ferrigraph, which is fine. It's rid of my Iron Ball, but I don't really need it anymore. Because I don't need to exchange abilities with Torkoal. It's a dimension return to normal. The Grassy Terrain disappears. Yeah, so they have less pressure with Wood Hammer. So I'm going to go for a Flamethrower. I'm going to go for Flamethrower into, I guess, the Iron Valiant. And I'm just going to go for a Trick Room. Because I think you need to double Torkoal to pick up the knockout. And if you do, I get a free switch to Iron Hands. And I'm pretty sure Iron Hands could just sweep the game on its own. With the right support. Especially with Heal Pulse still on deck for my Slowpoke. Uh, if they want... Yeah, I don't know. It just seems really tough for them. If they go for the Furgraph, I just get a free Flamethrower. Probably Knockout in the Iron Valiant. I imagine even if that's... Yeah, they go for Wide Guard again. So they're just hoping that I only have Spread Moves on this thing at this point. Maybe like Spread Moves plus Earth Power here. Like Eruption Heat Wave. Earth Power Protect, which is probably the standard Torkoal set, but I do have Flamethrower on this, so. That is going to be a very, very cooked Iron Valiant here, and I'm sorry, Iron Valiant. You are not living this unless you're Focus Ash. Oh, you are Focus Ash on this team. Okay. Does that change that much? Not really. It's going to do... I mean, I could go... I mean, I guess I can go Iron Hands. 
and click fake out in iron valiant because to click wide guard if it has protected it's very unlikely to get that protect so i just go for a flank door into the real boom and i click fake out into the iron valiant if they get the double protect they need protect on the real boom too but they're just gonna forfeit because i don't think the real boom had anything like i don't mean my horsepower crit even knocks out Torkoal. They probably didn't even have it. The Iron Valiant's vulnerable has to have Protect, or if it does have Protect, they just auto lose the game, I think, in that position. So, yeah, not really much they could do there. So, <laughs> uh, I was not expecting the Earthquake there and Fire Wrap, but you know what? I still got the policy. It kind of worked out. <laughs> That's all I needed. <laughs> all right, let's go over the games. In game one, I went insane with the skill swap plays against the underwear Dundoza with the slow poke, which allowed me to break through the boosted Dundoza with Torkoal after some ability shifting. In game two, was able to secure the Torkoal under Trick Room and break through their Annihilate, but the job was not done yet. Thankfully, the Iron Hands next to Slowpoke was able to set up a second Trick Room and able to finish off my opponent's final two. In game three, was not expecting my opponent to play so aggressive with Earthquake and Fiery Wrath, but Torkoal was able to get the policy set up and continue to heal and spam Eruption under Trick Room. I really think that this team is really unique, and what the best part is, you have two options for the Torkoal, so if your Trick Room user goes down early, you could still set up with another one remaining, and they have really cool abilities with the Oblivious being able to prevent taunts, the Armor Tail preventing their priorities for you and your partner, really sick, the Eject Button Iron Hands, that just allows for a Torkoal setup. Really, really nice synergy and very fun overall. If you would like to check out the details of the team and the creator, that will be linked in the description down below. You can try out the team on your screen with the rental. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.